Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we are going to be reading True Glitch in the Matrix stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. We moved to this new house in January of 2019. We had left our other house in November of 2018. While we were waiting for this house to be ready for our move in, we stayed in a hotel and our load was stored by the moving company. Once we moved in, all our belongings came to the house and the numbers matched and all is good. Some things were put into storage here because we weren't ready to set them up or didn't need them yet. Either garage, basement, or storage room. One of the things that went to storage was a mirror for over the dresser. We had decided not to put it over the dresser when we initially arranged the master bedroom in this house. It had been attached to the back of the dresser in the old house for years, and I just wanted a change. Fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. We got a new bed and I decided to once again change things up. New bedding, new curtains, new decor, etc. We pulled the mirror out of the storage room and I figured we'd either use the same hardware from my husband's extensive collection, or there would be a trip to the hardware store to attach it, since I wasn't sure where the original hardware was. No big deal either way. Once we pulled the box off the mirror, though, we noticed there is no way to attach the mirror to the back of the dresser. It used to have pieces that slide down into these fasteners on the back of the dresser. We pulled the dresser out, and there is no indication that the mirror was ever attached to the dresser. The fasteners were no longer there. No holes where the fasteners were attached to the dresser by screws either. We were both confused. Then we noticed there are now hangers on the back of the mirror to hang it from the wall. It's a pretty heavy mirror, so my husband got his heavy-duty anchors. Drill, screws, level, pencil, all the stuff, and proceeded to hang the mirror on the wall took way longer than the few minutes it normally took for us to lift the mirror, slide the pieces down into their fasteners, and tighten everything. A few minutes before I started writing this, I was cleaning out my drawer and my bedside table, and I found a package labeled Master Bedroom Mirror. It has all the hardware in it. I checked the dresser again, but there are no holes where the mirror was originally placed. My mirror is firmly attached to the wall, and the pieces that slide down to attach to the dresser didn't magically disappear. Now I don't know what I should do with the random hardware. A few years ago, before I had a proper job, I occasionally did babysitting and pet sitting to earn a little extra cash. At the time of this incident, I was watching my neighbor's cats while they were on vacation. Before they left, I was given a list of what I needed to do each day, such as change the litter, refill the food dishes, etc. Pretty standard stuff. I took the list home and was going to put it on the fridge, but I couldn't find a spot for it. If I recall correctly, we only had one spare magnet left, and there were already too many other things hung up. So I went to my room and put it in my desk drawer instead. When I woke up the next morning, I looked in that same drawer that I put the list in, but it was gone. I checked my other drawers as well, and some other places in my room, but it was just plain missing. I then went back out to the kitchen, only to find the list hanging on the fridge, with the magnet I had planned to use before. Later that day, I asked my dad if he put the list up, and he said he found it on our shoe rack in the living room. I have no idea how it could have gotten there, because I distinctly remember putting the list in my drawer. I was also by myself the night prior, so there was nobody else that could have potentially moved it. This really freaked me out at the time, and still does thinking back. 
I have no history of sleepwalking, and I don't use any mind-altering substances, etc. So I have literally no explanation for this. Years ago, I was lying on the couch over the summer holidays. I remember being so bored. I was just doing that thing where you stare at the ceiling and look at all the lines and cracks. Then suddenly, I saw something appear from nowhere, and it fell right down, getting bigger and bigger until it was close enough for me to be like, is that a grape? It happened fast, but I was aware of it enough to react by closing my eyes. Right before it fell, and hit me on the eyebrow. I looked everywhere for that grape, but couldn't find anything. It had been so vivid, a little green grape. It's important to note that I was alone in the house and we did not have any grapes because they're as expensive as hell here. They were sometimes a treat, but I checked the kitchen anyway. Anyway, I was weirded out, but just thought it was just one of those things. I didn't say anything to anyone. Besides, I had no physical evidence. Two to three weeks later, I'm playing Spyro on the PS1 on the same couch, while my brother is lying on the other couch. I don't remember if he was sleeping or watching. Either way, he gets up suddenly and was like, What the hell? Why did you just throw this at me? And I looked away from my game, and he's holding a little green grape, looking super mad. I swore on my life that I didn't throw it. And where would I have even gotten one? Like, they were like gold in our house. But he insisted he had felt it hit his face quite solidly and landed next to him on the couch. I told him about my own experience with ceiling grape, that he just thought I was being an annoying little sister and didn't believe me. To this day, he remembers it happening, but still thinks it was me since nobody else was in the house. Even though he now admits that he didn't see me move at all, and can't explain where I would get a singular grape from. Anyway, I can't explain it. And to this day, I think of it every time I eat grapes. Last night, I was driving from one small town in Texas to another that was about 40 miles away. It was an extremely foggy night, and I was definitely driving slower than normal. It was a route that I had driven hundreds of times. Only this time, I got lost and gained 20 minutes slash miles. Let me explain. Vision that night was extremely poor, maybe 200 feet in front of me. I was traveling about 40 miles per hour. Speed limit is 60. Anyway, I left the small town heading for the next one. I knew that it would take me a good 40 to 45 minutes based on the speed and familiarity of the route. It didn't. I arrived at the next town in 20 minutes. Absolutely impossible. Yet there I was. I pulled over and just stood on the side of the road. It was after midnight, so very little traffic. I'm still trying to figure out what happened. I woke up today at exactly 10.05 a.m. I got up and went to the bathroom. Then I put on some coffee. I came back into my room to check my phone, and I was very confused and felt uneasy that the time now read 11.08 a.m. I've experienced similar incidents, but not in about five years, and certainly not as disorienting as this. I feel very drained today and feel like a good chunk of the day has been robbed of me. This happened maybe 30-ish minutes ago. Second ever glitch I've really experienced firsthand. 
so I'm at work. And I was instructed to clean the bathrooms. Okay, cool. I go into the back where all of our cleaners are. And I look and grab a Clorox bottle. Small. Has blue paper label around it. I turn to grab a rag. And turn back to grab the Clorox. And there's now a bottle of glass cleaner where I sat the bleach one. The glass cleaner is way larger, thicker, and has a black paper label around it. The only glass cleaner is above slash below where the bleach bottles are. They were hanging and I grabbed it by the nozzle. When I grabbed the bleach, there was only other bleach bottles hanging, so there's no way that I grabbed the glass cleaner by accident. The rags are right next to the cleaning stuff, so while technically everything was in sight, I was focused purely on the rags. One of the food safety ones. Those blue ones that you rip away from other ones and whatnot. So... It's not like it changed before my eyes or anything, but still, really weird. This happened last week. I intended to post about it immediately, but I'm glad I didn't, since I had another glitch later that same day. It was around 8 a.m. on Thursday, and I was returning home from a walk with my dogs before starting work for the day. As I approached my house, I saw a dime, 10 cents. It was the part of my driveway that crosses the sidewalk, reverse slash tails side up, the torch with branches on either side. I hadn't seen it on the way out. I don't usually bother to pick up anything less than a quarter, but it looked weird either like it was scratched or maybe had some tiny dew drops on it. So I bent down and picked it up to see. The dime had four deep scratches, running diagonally most of the way across the reverse slash tail side, almost like furrows. It was dated 1986 on the front slash head side. I put it in my pocket and went inside and upstairs to my bedroom to get ready for work. I looked at the dime again, wondering why I bothered to pick it up and placed it on the top of my dresser where I keep my watch, my rings, and a few other items, but no coins. Deeply furrowed, tail side up. I was working from home that day, so I went about my work from home routine as usual. Shortly after lunch, around 2 p.m., I went to my bedroom to take off my watch and ring, which were randomly bothering me. I saw the dime with the front slash head side up, which was weird because I definitely left it tail side up with the scratches visible. I definitely didn't want it to be tails down, because I didn't want the ridges of the furrows scratching my dresser. I picked it up and flipped it over, and the tail side was a normal dime. No scratches. I checked and the front side was still 1986. The scratches were literally the only reason I picked up this dime in the first place. I wasn't alone in the house. My wife and dogs were there, but I hadn't mentioned the dime and my wife isn't in the habit of touching stuff on my dresser. I wasn't on any substances. I wasn't sick, and it was otherwise a totally normal weekday. The dime just seemed to heal itself sometime between 8.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. Part 2 This glitch happened last week at about 3 p.m. on Thursday. I was working in my home office, which is near the downstairs door where we let the dogs out into the backyard. The backyard has a well-built, well-maintained six-foot privacy fence all the way around. It has vertical planks, so there's nowhere to get an easy foothold for climbing. Our front yard is also fenced, and the neighbors on either side and behind us also have fenced yards. So if you were to leap over our six-foot fence in any direction, you'd be in another fenced yard. Neither of our medium-sized dogs, six years and ten years, have ever jumped the fence or anything else. Nor are there any gaps that even a tiny dog could squeeze under or through. My wife took the dogs out to the backyard for their usual mid-afternoon break. It was a nice day, so she stayed outside with them. She came in to tell me something real quick, but she kept the back door open the whole time and was essentially standing in the doorway looking in at me to talk. She couldn't have been looking into the house for more than 30 seconds. That's being generous. I think it was more like 15 seconds. And then turned back outside. I hear her calling for our six-year-old dog in a confused manner, and then she yelled to me. He's not in the yard. I ran out back and he wasn't there. I opened the gate and ran into the front yard. 
out the front gate and into the street and saw him two houses up the street, sniffing a tree in a neighbor's front yard, about 210 feet from our backyard. He looked up at me and happily trotted back when I called, but I have no idea how he crossed two fences and got two houses up in such a short amount of time. Being generous, only a couple of minutes elapsed between my wife coming in and saying something and me and my dog in my neighbor's yard. When we go for walks, it can take us forever just to get beyond our next door neighbor's house because of all of the interesting smells in our front yard and the neighbor's yard. My wife and I checked every part of the fence to see if the dogs dug a hole or if a plank was missing, but the fence was secure as always. So yeah, it really seems like my dog teleported from our backyard to a neighbor's front yard, over two fences and 210 feet away. Between that and the scratched dime that fixed itself earlier in the day, I don't know what to make of Thursday, January the 12th. One time, a couple years back, me and my dad went out to Gabella's, basically a less cool Bass Pro Shop, because I really wanted to try this astronaut ice cream stuff that was trending around this time, but that's besides the point. The Cabela's was around 45 minutes away from us, and on the way back, we got on the highway, and I didn't blink or anything. Nothing that could have caused me to fall asleep, but I looked away, and next thing I knew, we were getting off the highway. If I fell asleep, I would have known. My dad would have said something, asking about if I had a good nap or something like that. I didn't feel tired or anything either. Does anyone know what this could have been? I was fortunate enough to be a partner and the operator of a company that we grew and sold after about three years. I'm very proud of that, but it's not the glitch. I've been gone from that company for five years. It sold about that time. My family and I have moved two times since then, and the company isn't something that we even mention anymore until my wife texted me yesterday that she was cleaning out the garage and remembered that I still needed to toss a storage bin of the last remaining company stuff from that company. Why did she remember and text now? Who knows, but she is right. It's all literally just trash now. But it's in the basement behind all the Christmas we packed up a couple years ago. I would need to spend an hour digging to find the bin and get it to the trash. She did not dig out the bin. In fact, she did not even go to the basement. She only texted remembering it's part of the stuff we had to get rid of. Hours later, we're all home from work and cleaning up some dishes from the sink and tossing some old refrigerator food into the disposal. My wife flips on the disposal to an obvious metal sound like a fork in with the food. She turns it off and reaches in to pull out the metal. She pulls out a nice black metal pen, mostly unscathed black pen with writing on it. I didn't recognize it. Neither did she nor our daughter, and it's a quality pen. Then she reads the writing, and it's my old company information on it. Somehow, invoking the company's memory caused a sweet pen to show up on our disposal. We didn't have a kitchen drunk drawer. We keep one pen on its pad on a fridge, and it was still there. We do have our family random desk pens upstairs in the office, but none of us have been up there since last year, and my wife keeps it in check. She said it's not what she keeps out, and doesn't recall ever seeing us get pens that nice there. She's pen picky and they're all a certain brand and ink color with the fine points she likes. We're stumped. It's a definite glitch. And why was it in the disposal? Okay, so today my sister and I had a weird experience. We went to the dog park together with our two puppies. We'd been walking around a little, but there weren't very many dogs there and it was cold. 
so we decided to sit down on a bench. Well, on the way over to the bench, my sister noticed that someone had put a tennis ball in the branch of one of the trees near the bench we were sitting at. This tree was just a baby tree, and it's winter, so there were no leaves. It was just a skeleton of a tree with a ball in it. I watched my sister throw the ball to one of the dogs, who goes and gets it, picks it up with his other ball at the time, and trots back over to its owners. It was cute, and my sister and I went to sit on the bench. After a few minutes, we decided to go sit on another bench closer to the exit, since we were leaving soon anyways. Just after standing up, we noticed something about the tree my sister found the ball in. The ball was back on the tree, setting right where it had been before my sister had even touched it. The strange thing was that because of our bench view, we'd be able to see someone walking back over and putting it back in the tree, which would be weird anyways, but it didn't happen. There was also only one ball in the tree to start with, and it was on the same branch in the same place when we realized it was back. The tree was just a baby tree, but it was a larger baby tree, and the dog who caught the ball definitely couldn't have reached the same branch we found it in to maybe put it back. Besides, we were watching the tree the whole time, and that might have looked a bit odd. There was only one ball in the tree to begin with, which was quite clear because there were no leaves on the tree and it was still a pretty thin tree, with the branches and trunk maybe half the size of the ball. I don't know if the ball we threw for the dog was still there or not, because in the moment, the realization felt really, well, surreal, and my brain was confused. All I know is that there was no way it could have gotten back to that exact same place. How did it get back? This happened a while ago, but figured I'd share it. Back in 2020, I took my cousins to see the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. It came out right before the lockdown. I paid for the movie at the theater, and the signs all indicated it was playing at the time I and my cousins expected it to play. We then walk into the theater where the movie will be playing, only to find out it wasn't that movie at all. I thought somehow I had goofed, and my cousins and I walked out of the theater, but nowhere could we find the movie. In fact, even the theater with the Sonic logo above the door, where I swear it was before we entered, wasn't there anymore. I then walked to the counter to inquire about this, and was told the movie didn't exist, and that I couldn't have paid for it. I then went to show the person the movie ticket, and it wasn't for Sonic either. It was at an AMC theater. When I got home, I called another AMC theater, and was told that the movie didn't exist there either. I had the weirdest experience this morning. My cat jumped out of one of the windows in my study room, and when I went to check the window, it was broken and opened from top to bottom instead of the usual sideways. I'm South African for reference, just in case you need an idea of how our windows look. Then I proceeded to close the other window and sit in the lounge. So at this point, both windows in my study were closed. When I went back to the study room, my cat was back in the room. I was so confused and shocked because I closed both windows. My boyfriend and I both work from home. Our landlord had plumbers come in this week to redo the plumbing lines and add some new water lines. My landlord, let's call him Alex, is a very hands-on guy, so he was in and out during the whole process. The next day, they were doing the neighbor's unit. That morning, he knocked and said that later that day, he was going to come back with a guy to get some estimates on patching the holes in the wall. We said okay and continued our morning. 12 p.m. rolls around and I leave the house to go get us lunch. Before I leave, Alex comes over and he sees me walk out and asks if he and the whole guy can come inside and look at the walls. 
I said yes and told him that my boyfriend was inside and to go ahead and do whatever he needed to do. I come back from picking up food and my boyfriend tells me that they were quick about it and left almost right after I did. We sit down to eat and we get a knock at the door. It's Alex and the guy again. He says the same words to me twice and I say, oh, you're back. And he said, funny, I know yesterday was rough, but we just need to see an estimate of the walls so that he can fix them. And I was in shock. The collar left from my face and I was so confused. My boyfriend was also confused. He was just here and did the exact same thing. We were both in shock. What a weird glitch. I just found this subreddit, so I thought I'd share this. This story happened sometime in 2020 or 2021. My uncle passed away a few months before this incident because he was a heavy smoker and got a virus his immune system couldn't keep up with. But anyway, for context, my dad and I were on the highway to my grandma's house, which was a few hours away. After driving over 100 kilometers per hour down the highway, my dad and I suddenly heard a human-sounding knock on the car's windshield. We briefly looked at each other thinking, what the heck was that? This knock was so loud and clear, and it was a triple knock. Obviously, no one or bird could have been on top of the car with the speed it was going. Then a few seconds later, we heard another knock. We were both staring at each other confused again. Then we spent a solid five minutes talking about what we had just heard and how it didn't make any sense with us being on the highway. Then my eyes started tearing up slightly. We were speculating that our uncle could have been trying to communicate with us. We got to my grandma's and drove back later. Nothing strange on the trip back. But when we got home, my dad checked his computer, and his wallpaper was reset entirely. This was the first time this had happened, so he checked some logs that would have shown if something or someone had changed the wallpaper. I don't know what kind of logs these are for the record, but something for windows. And he said that there was nothing mentioning the wallpaper change. To this day, I still don't know how to explain this. I still believe it was my uncle trying to communicate with us. And I found it strange the wallpaper was reset on the same day as the knock. Weirdly, we weren't as scared or creeped out as we should have been by it all. It was all just really strange and unexplainable. Edit. After thinking about it, now I'm certain it was in 2021 because in 2020 I wouldn't have been able to visit my grandma. I never thought someone here would have experienced the same thing as me, possibly at the exact same time. This actually happened, and everyone around me thinks I'm making it up or I'm just not remembering it right. It's difficult to explain and give a mental picture of the situation, but I'll do my best. Every Monday, I have an hour lunch break, where I drive a mile down the main road to a plaza with a McDonald's. It's important that my place of employment is also on this main road, sitting on the corner of it and at a dead-end residential road. There's also a church across from my workplace on this residential road, I was eating my lunch in the parking lot of the plaza, like I do every Monday. There was only one exit back to the main road, via a stoplight, that you get to with a right turn from a straightaway that splits the parking lot from right and left. I was coming perpendicular to the straightaway from the parking lot aisle, when a car pulls up on the straightaway. She stopped at the stop sign before making a right to the exit. This put my car facing her sitting perpendicular. She did not move for a few minutes just staring at me with dark and cold eyes. I didn't see her blink once. I gestured multiple times to make the turn so that I could leave. She put both her thumbs in her ear, stuck out her tongue, and did the na 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 face. She finally looks away and makes a right into the exit lane. Now that I'm free to turn to the stop sign and turn into the exit, I end up right behind her car at the exit, which had a red light. 
When the light turned green, she and I both made a right onto the main road, going towards my place of employment. She passed the side street where my building sets, while I turned left onto the side street. I made a quick three-point turn to Parallel Park in front of the church now on my right, facing the main road I turned off of. I was getting my belongings together when I got an eerie feeling that I was just being watched. I looked out my driver's side window when I saw her car lined up with mine, giving me the na 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 face. She then drove off and turned back onto the main road, leaving me there stunned, confused, and honestly kind of scared. There was no other way she could have gotten into that road, facing the direction she was going, and the amount of time she had without me seeing or coming into contact with while I was parking. No explanation. Just a weird, eerie, unexplainable thing. I have for sure died twice, quite possibly four times. Of the two, I'm very confident in the first one happening in about 1998 and the other in 2018 or so. In the first instance, my best friend and I were driving gravel back roads in the middle of the night, 40 miles between towns in rural South Dakota. I was admittedly going far too fast, and we came over a small rise and there was a T in the road where you could turn left or right, but straightforward was a driveway for a farmhouse. The driveway went for about a half a block or so, and then transitioned into a cornfield. I remember saying, oh, F, and starting to slow down as we started flying through the very tall corn. It was late summer, and the corn stalks were basically full grown. The sound as my car plowed over the corn stalks and into the field sounded like the most vicious hailstorm ever. The experience was completely overwhelming to the senses. The sights and sounds of flying headlong at high speeds into a fully grown, densely planted cornfield cannot be overstated. This is where things get weird. The next thing I remember was setting at the stop sign, where we would turn onto the main highway in the area. It was nearly completely silent, with only the light hum of the engine creating any sound. This was at least several miles away from the field we had just flown into. My blinker was on, to the left, and the car was just sitting still with my foot on the brakes. The black of motion and dead silence was, for reasons unknown, also absolutely overwhelming. I felt extremely disoriented and discombobulated, and was honestly not certain how I had come to this point, and was even concerned that perhaps I had blacked out or something. I just was not certain how we had arrived where we were currently sitting. At this point, I did not remember flying through that intersection or crashing through the cornfield. That memory was gone, either blocked or unremembered. I looked over at my friend and again said, what the F? He had a dumbfounded look on his face as well and shrugged his shoulders. And after a moment said, I think we go left. I actually got out of the car and found the Northern Star to make sure that we would be turning the correct direction onto the highway. I also surveyed the situation grasping for some semblance of understanding. We were surprisingly close to town. I lived it at the time. In short order, we made it to my apartment and both crashed as it was four in the morning and we had a very long day. I was dead sober for this entire experience, but I did not feel right and I knew something was amiss. We got up the next day at about mid morning and got back in my car and drove to my friend's town where he was attending college, which was going to be about a five hour drive. We needed gas and I stopped at a station to fill up and get other miscellaneous supplies. My car I was driving at the time was old enough to be using a bit of oil, so I almost always checked the oil. Again, at this moment, my memories of the cornfield and all that were completely gone. I popped the hood and went around to the front of the car to get at the engine. I lifted the hood and glanced down. I have never been so absolutely baffled and immediately enlightened at the same time. A light breeze would have knocked me over. The engine compartment was almost completely chock full of corn stalks. My knees went weak and I became very, very heady. 
I felt like I performed several full spins. Once again, I very loudly and firmly proclaimed what the F and called to my friend so that he would come around to the front of the car. The very instant I saw the corn stalks in the engine compartment, the entire accident flashed back to me. I don't remember the point of death, but I remember all the other details, including being very confused sitting at the stop sign by the highway and the brutal contrast between flying through the field and sitting still at the stop sign. My friend said to me, Do you remember? I said, Yeah. We talked it over multiple times during our long drive, and we had the exact same memories. His memory also returned to him the second he saw corn in the car as well. A couple months later, I tried to drive the same back roads that we had been driving to find that intersection, and the farmhouse, and the driveway, and the cornfield. There were a couple of very unique specific details to the location where our accident happened that should have made it very easy to recognize and find. I was never able to locate a spot like this on any of the roads anywhere around where we would have been driving. Microsoft had also just released their satellite imagery, and I scoured everywhere between those two cities, and I have never been able to find the location where we had our accident. I honestly don't think it exists on this timeline. The other time, I was out in the middle of the night again, in a very rural area, during a thunderstorm to take lightning photos. I'm pretty sure that I saw the lightning bolt that killed me prior to my timeline jump. I remember sitting in the car and finishing my styrofoam cup of gas station coffee, and hopping out of the car to smoke a cigarette and go pee on the gravel road. Most of the lightning was several miles to the west, and it wasn't even actually raining where I was parked. I was not worried about lightning safety at this point. Now the very large power lines that had electricity to the town I was living in were right by this road. I've been pretty close to a couple of lightning strikes. I'm no stranger. I remember getting that very powerful static feeling, and the hair on my head and my arms started to stand up. I knew it was coming. I started to say OF, oh, reached for the door handle, and before I could even get my profanity out, I remember a profoundly huge snap sound and a blinding white light. The next thing I remember was sitting in my parked car with my nearly full cup of coffee in my hand. I remember thinking that I wanted to smoke a cigarette and I needed to go pee, so I chugged the lukewarm coffee and started to get out of the car. The second my feet hit the ground, I felt the most massive wave of deja vu I have ever experienced. I nervously glanced up beside the road to look at the power lines, but the spot I had stopped previously was about a mile down the road and the power lines had turned a corner and not followed the road down to this point. I glanced down the road to what I thought was the spot I had previously been in, and just as I looked down the road, lightning struck the power line in multiple massive flashes, and I even saw the lightning bolt jump down to the ground under the power line. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I witnessed the very lightning bolt that killed me. I have a couple of other experiences where I'm pretty sure I died, but the situations were ambiguous enough that I'm not certain. So you are not alone. And if you ask around, you'll be surprised of the number of people who have confusing, odd experiences where things are not quite as they seem. They have been many people delighted to finally gain the proper vocab word to label their experience. Quantum immortality. I was staying with my mother recently while she was recovering from surgery, and I would take care of making breakfast and getting her morning medicines together for her to take with her food. One medicine needed to be kept in the refrigerator. I always put the bottle, which had a bright red cap in the same place, on one of the refrigerator door shelves. One morning the bottle was gone. It wasn't like when you're looking for something and it ends up being right in front of you. No, the bottle was gone. Not only did I look everywhere, inside and out of the refrigerator, but my mom did too. We both kept saying how weird it was. About an hour later, I went to pick up some groceries, thinking I would look again for the medicine when I came back. I got back and started putting the groceries away, 
and when I opened the refrigerator, the first thing I saw was the medicine bottle, just where it should have been before. Just then, my mother walked into the kitchen and said, I see you found the medicine bottle. Where was it? She said, what are you talking about? I didn't find it. I opened the refrigerator door to show her, and we both just looked at each other gobsmacked. No one else was in the house. I'm not religious, but my mom is, and she said that God winked at us. Updated on 127 2023. Well, it's happened again. My mother has recovered enough that I was able to go back to my home, and now I come see her three times per week. When I saw her two days ago, she asked me about one of her medications she only needs to take as needed, and she hadn't taken it at all since she came home from the hospital. I didn't want her mixing the bottle up with any of her daily medications, so I put it in one of her kitchen cabinets behind some bowls. I went to get the bottle for her and it wasn't there. No one else has been in her house but me. I ended up taking everything out of the cabinet and the bottle wasn't there. Maybe the next time I see her, it'll have shown up again like the last time. If it does, I'll give another update. I feel like Nancy Drew and the case of the missing drugs. A few years ago, when my daughter was three, I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. My husband and I were in no way trying for a baby whatsoever. I was on birth control and we were very careful. I walk into her preschool one day to find the director and her teachers telling me congratulations with big smiles on their faces. I used to work as a preschool teacher here, so a lot of these people were close friends of mine. I asked them what they're congratulating me for. And they tell me that my daughter announced to everyone that mommy has a little sister in her tummy. I laughed it off and told them all I was sorry to disappoint them, but that just wasn't true. My daughter and I went home and talked about it. I told her mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy. And she just kept pointing at my belly and saying, yes, you do. As if I were lying to her. A few days later, I wake up to someone touching my belly. My daughter has the bottom of my shirt pulled up with her head resting on my belly while she rubs it gently and says, Baby sister, what are you doing hiding in there? It was really sweet, and I just assumed that she really wanted a little sister. She had never expressed any interest in having a sibling prior to this, and we never discussed it. We had the talk again, and she got upset with me, and told me that she has seen her before, and she is in there. She told me that her sister looks different, and has blonde hair and blue eyes with little holes in her cheeks, AKA dimples. My daughter, husband and I all have very dark hair, chocolate brown eyes and no dimples. I talk to her about wanting a sibling and tell her that when I finish school, we'll try to give her a little brother or sister. Again, she's frustrated and yelling. I already have a sister. I was expecting my period to start within the next week like clockwork. It didn't. I took a pregnancy test and just stared at that faint positive result for what felt like forever. I was completely in shock. I was on birth control, so I immediately called my OBGYN, and they saw me the next day. It was estimated that I was four weeks and six days pregnant. I gave birth to a blonde-haired, blue-eyed little girl with the sweetest dimples. This experience has always blown my mind. I always find ways to explain away strange occurrences, but I'm having trouble with this one. Background information. I have a best friend named Kat. Our song is Umbrella by Rihanna. I was at work today. I work in a gym. And we're really slow today. So I'm chatting with Kat on Messenger. She sent me a screenshot of an article about a priest who had a near-death experience and says that he went to hell and demons were singing music by Rihanna. She said, I read this headline and automatically started singing Umbrella to myself. 
She sent another screenshot that mentions the actual song Umbrella in the article, so she thought that it was a funny coincidence. I finished reading the article and I typed back LOL. As I hit send, I see a woman walking towards my desk. I quickly set down my phone and said, how can I help you? This is where it gets weird. She looks at me and asks, can I have an umbrella? Then she kind of looks confused, shakes her head a bit and says, jump rope. I need a jump rope. I'm stunned for a second and stood up and said, yes, of course. Let me run into the back and grab that for you. I glance outside to check the weather and it's bright and sunny. I bring back the jump rope and hand it to her. She still looks a little dazed and says, I have no idea why I said umbrella. Weird. Then she thanks me and walks back to the fitness area. I text the cat the exchange, and we were both equally creeped out. My daughter said to post it here. What do you think happened here? Coincidence? When I was 17 years old, I had a series of very strange encounters with what I thought at the time was a stray cat. Now I'm not so sure. So the first time I encountered this cat, it was just a normal day at school. I was exiting the school bus and getting ready to walk home, when my attention was suddenly drawn to a small figure moving in the distance, I'd say about 50 feet away. It was a cat, for all intents and purposes, but it was very strange in appearance. It had an extremely long, very skinny neck and a relatively small head in comparison to its body, which was the size of a normal cat. Initially, I thought, poor thing, it must have been hurt really badly and is now deformed. Weirdly enough, though, as I was staring at it, I suddenly start to experience a fear that I can't quite explain. I couldn't figure out why exactly I was afraid, but I started to notice that this cat was staring back at me too, very intently. Now I'm aware that all cats stare, but this thing was looking at me in a way that I only know how to describe as human-like, calculating even. It felt quite sinister. This couldn't have lasted any more than two minutes, but I was so terrified that my heart was racing and I was shaking. I began to panic a little, and I started to walk towards my home, backwards, because I wanted to keep eyes on it. Something in my head told me that it would follow me, which it did. As I got closer to our townhouse, I'd say that it was about 500 feet away from the bus stop, I just took off running. Sure enough, it ran after me, but for whatever reason, it kept a healthy distance between us and didn't fully catch up to me, which it definitely could have because it was unusually fast. Honestly, it just seemed to be toying with me. It maintained direct, unwavering eye contact with me the entire time. After I was finally able to get my key in the lock, As I was shaking so hard, I burst through the door and slammed it behind me. I took a couple of deep breaths and looked out the window next to the door. The cat was standing just outside the window staring at me. From that point on, for about two weeks, this cat would randomly show up and torment me. Sometimes it would stalk me home. Other times I'd be in my room and a strange feeling would come over me. I'd get up from my bed and go to my window to see the cat staring up at me from outside. The room was on the second floor of our house. It would literally be outside perched in the middle of the doorway, staring up into my room. So one weekend, my parents had gone out of town with my baby brother, and I had the place to myself. I remember this was on a Saturday. I had slept in and was just so happy to have a lazy day. After I got up, brushed my teeth slash face and went back to my room and that strange feeling came over me. I went to the window and the cat was there. At this point I was beyond disturbed so I decided to go downstairs because even though the cat was outside it's like I could feel its gaze through the brick and mortar. I walked downstairs and turned the corner. The cat was now standing in the window by the front door staring at me. I quickly closed the blinds and went into the kitchen. The cat was now standing behind the glass doors that opened to the backyard, as our kitchen faced the backyard, staring at me. It took all of about 10 seconds for me to walk from the front door to the kitchen. 
So in 10 seconds, this severely deformed looking cat raced around the townhouse, managed to scale a security fence, just to be able to stare at me from a different vantage point. At that point, I just shrugged my shoulders and decided to lay on the couch and watch TV. I was so mentally drained and seriously thought that I might be going crazy, but I knew that I wasn't. Eventually, it just stopped showing up. I still have zero clue what this thing was. It was not a cat. Cats don't monitor people. And the worst part was that I knew I can't tell anyone about this, as I would sound completely psychotic. The literal only person I've ever shared this with is my mom, and that's only because she's actually witnessed one of the interactions. I've been inspired. Maybe around 15 years ago, I was deciding to get ready to leave and realized my keys weren't where I was sure that I had left them the night before after I had got home from work. I searched the house, first the obvious places, nightstand, dresser top, my bag, coat pockets, desk by the door, then the laundry hamper and pockets of those clothes, the floor around the bedroom, I'm a neat freak, so it was tidy to the point of Spartan. The floor around the front door, all the flat surfaces in the kitchen, including inside cabinets and the fridge, the bathroom, top to bottom, the yard, driveway, inside the car, under it, everywhere. My mother even got in on it, rechecking every place I looked. During all this, I kept coming back to the dresser in my room. I leaned on it to think several times because it was tall, and the way the room was arranged, it was smack in the middle, and just a convenient place to lean and think. Where else could they be? Again, neat freak. I hate clutter. So the top was empty except for a little metal pen holder slash cup. I ran my hands over the top of the dresser, lifted up the pen holder, looked inside all the drawers, looked inside the pen holder dumped out the laundry basket next to the dresser and checked everything inside again. Nothing. So I went back to scouring the house, moving furniture in the living room, checking down inside the couch crevices, etc. At the point where I gave up, and because a lot of strange things had already happened in that house, I sighed and blurted out something like, okay, this isn't funny anymore, give them back. Eventually I wandered back into my room, leaned on the dresser and looked down, the keys were laying, dead center on top of the dresser. I had checked. I don't even know how many times. I'd looked there. Mom had looked. They hadn't been there. I yelled for my mom. We were the only people home. I showed her. We stared at the keys and then at each other. I think she said something about a guardian angel, and I joked about fairies. For the record... Yes, my mom has been known to play small pranks on rare occasions. Rubber cockroach in the shower, for instance. But she would have been too pleased with herself to resist the urge to admit it if she had done it. Besides, she would never do that with anything as important as keys. Right before I had to leave. She's not a mean prankster. I'd had similar issues with disappearing slash reappearing things. But I always put it down to forgetfulness. That was the first time it was obviously not my mistake. It was like the universe just forgot the keys existed for a little while. That also wasn't the last time something lost mysteriously ended up somewhere obvious that it hadn't been previously. My girlfriend is my only witness to this, but I was getting something out of the oven and using our regular oven mitts. They have no holes or imperfections and have never given me issue before. I go to pick up the tray and it feels as if I'm holding it with my bare hand. I screamed out in pain and quickly pulled the glove off, but there was no physical burn and no longer any burning sensation. 
I've used them since then with no problems. I live in an apartment that has a small patio. I live with my cat and there's no way for another animal larger than a cockroach to get into said patio because the wall separating it from my neighbor's patio is tall and unclimbable and anything coming from above would need to take a four-story fall. There's only one way to enter the patio, through a door in my kitchen. There are no windows to the patio, but they all have mosquito screens that can't be removed and have no holes. I only have one cat and no other pets, and my neighbors don't own any animals. The door to the patio is sometimes open for my cat to go out when I'm home during the day, but I bring her inside and close the door when it gets dark. She's used to this routine by now and will sometimes run inside without me coaxing her when she hears me walking to the door to the patio. So one day I'm going to get her. I walk towards said door and she runs inside brushing past me. I see her. Feel her fur on my leg because I was wearing shorts. Hear her little bell go by, and her soft meow of acknowledgement. As I mentioned, she knows the gig and will sometimes come in by herself, so nothing seems strange to me. I close the door, looking at the floor to make sure the cloth I use as a sort of mat is not caught on the bottom of the door, because then it's a pain to open again. I go back to what I was doing, and a few minutes later a gust of cold wind blows. And shortly after that, I start hearing scratching on the door to the patio. I thought it had to be one of two things. Either a rat had defiled all laws of physics to be on my patio, or my cat was asking to go out again. I grab a stick in case it's the former and go check. To my surprise, the noise came from the cat. Outside, asking to be let in. I open the door and she comes running in, meowing indignantly. As I mentioned... Once inside and with the door closed, she couldn't have exited again. I mentioned the part of the cloth because she couldn't have sneaked past me as I was looking at her only way out. It's not like I saw a dark figure and assumed it to be her. I felt and heard her too. I spent the next few hours looking at her, trying to see if she acted weird, like she would if another animal were in the house. But nothing. It's been a few days and still no sign of anything strange other than the fact that my cat teletransported to the other side of the door. I have woken up twice now to pixels on my wall. I really don't know how better to describe it. I have woken up suddenly and for no apparent reason to weird pixel-like shapes on my bedroom wall, about three inches wide and one inch tall, about a foot from my ceiling. It only lasts about three seconds after I wake up before literally just fading away. I wanted to just play it off as my brain still high on dream drugs. But get this, both times my cat has been obsessed with whatever it is. She actually lunged at it this morning, claws out and all. You could hear her nails grind on the wall on the way down after sprinting across the room. Both times she stared at the wall, where it was for a solid five minutes before moving. I actually was able to grab a picture of one this morning. My blinds are closed, and I live on the bottom of a hill surrounded by the trees. There are no angles in which a car from outside should be able to cause this. One time was weird. Twice has me kind of freaked out. I'm a logical person, but this... I have no idea what is happening. Something unexplainable happened to my older cousin and I when we were younger. Anytime someone asks if something paranormal has happened to me, this is what I tell them. Now that I've found this community, I think this was actually some weird glitch. It was and still is terrifying. A little background. It was a Saturday, I believe, and I was staying over at my cousin's house, the next town over from where I grew up. We had spent the better part of the afternoon prank calling various numbers because we were tween age slash teenagers. We made one call to a pizza place local to my state. 
We both remember calling them around 12 p.m. or so about some breadsticks and we gave his friend's address and name. Now for the glitch. The time was around 11.58 p.m., so about 12 hours later. My cousin and his friend and I were all sitting on the couch watching TV when one of us decided that it would be funny to make one last prank call. Where did we choose? The same pizza place as earlier. My cousin did the talking and it was the exact same order as earlier, except he added a large pizza. Remember, he gave his friend's name and address. He hung up the phone, turned off the lights, both of which took about 15 seconds. When he walked to sit down, what did we hear? Knocking on the door. As soon as the clock hit midnight, we were so scared, but we all looked outside anyway. It was the pizza place's delivery driver with our order. Yes, maybe they found out it was a prank, sure. But this was instantly after the order was taken. Remember, they didn't have our address. We didn't answer, and my cousin, who was rarely scared, was shaking. I remember us hiding for minutes after. It made no logical sense. We still can't explain it to this day, and the image of that delivery woman outside the house haunts me. What do you guys think? Is there an explanation for what my child said? It's creeping me out. Last spring when my son was three years old, we drove by a big white church. This church is one that we pass often driving around town. It is also the place of his current preschool. But at that time, he attended a different preschool and had never stepped foot in or talked about the big white church. So we drove by one day and he said, Oh, there's the church I ate cereal in. My husband and I looked at each other and I said, what do you mean? We've never been there before. We asked some additional questions, but he didn't really answer. However, he was very adamant about being there and eating cereal. This happened during a very difficult time in our lives. My father-in-law was on hospice and dying of cancer. For weeks, we were up and back to my in-law's house. This church being along the route. We said it a few more times and then never mentioned it again. Fast forward to today. He currently attends preschool at said church. He has been going since September and we love it. It is Christian though and we aren't very religious. Anyway, I got the monthly newsletter and it mentioned that next month is pajama day where the kids wear pajamas and eat cereal. I told my son and asked him if he remembered eating cereal there before. He said no and had no recollection of saying that he did. Is there any explanation to this? It gives me chills when I think about it. I still recall this incident frequently and wonder what the hell happened that day. I'd gone bowling with my cousin, and right when we were about to leave, I heard a voice calling my name, and we both turned around and saw two boys. One of them was calling my name and looked right at me. He was a complete stranger, and we approached him because I was shocked that he knew me, while I had never seen his face again. At first, I thought he was an old classmate of mine from primary school, and he had probably changed so much that I couldn't recognize him. I asked him who he was, and he seemed baffled that I didn't remember him. He told me, don't you remember me? I'm blank. Who helped you put your suitcase in your car last week? I asked him where that had happened, and he named one of the towns around the one that I lived in. I was so confused because this had never happened, and I told him he must be thinking of someone else. He said, aren't you my name? And I said, yeah, but I've never seen you before. He replied, you look exactly like her. I never forgot about that day. I still wonder who that girl was and how it is possible that she had my name and looked exactly like me and apparently lives near me too.
I'm not the only person in my family noticing that something is off within our house. We've been living here for a couple of years. Not a long time, really, and only recently have things started to become really strange. I would remember seeing countless objects move by themselves, especially in my kitchen. But I always made nothing of it, as I was the only one who saw these happenings. Well, recently, specifically in the last two days, my mom started seeing stuff like this as well. To put things into perspective, an object would be picked up and dropped off as if it was being manipulated by someone. Next thing I know, someone or something is waltzing through our doors, making themselves or itself welcome in our rooms before leaving by slamming the door. I can't say that I believe in the paranormal, but what the F? I can never see who or what is moving said objects as well. I hope that I'm just crazy. So I'm in high school, and to get to go to school in the morning, I go to my neighbor's house who happens to be one of my friends, and he takes me and himself to school. A few weeks ago, I walked over to his house after getting ready for school and get into his car. I get on my phone to text one of my other friends who was sick at the time to ask if he was coming to school that day. I remember texting him because the friend whose car I was riding in asked who I was texting. So we get to school and I reach for my phone in my pocket and find it isn't there. I look around to see if maybe it fell on the ground. I went to my other classes to see if it was in there. I tried everything I could. So I try to kind of forget about it until I could do something else about it. When I finally get back home, I try to look for it in my friend's car. And then I go back home when I can't find it. I get home and try to think about where it could have been. When I find it on my bed. I have no idea how it could have gotten there. And it's kind of freaky. The weirdest part is that both of us remember me texting the other friend in the car that morning. What could have happened? Today I was driving on the highway, and I was passing from the right lane over to the left. I'm driving around 74 to 75 miles per hour because my aunt and grandma are in the car. I suddenly pass by this state trooper who flicked on their lights after I drove by. I'm freaking out internally because I'm black, and I'm with my non-English speaking aunt and grandma in the car. So I slow down to try and not get pulled over for speeding. The craziest thing is that I see the trooper maneuver through the cars with flashing lights and everything. Then it dips behind a car and is gone. No one was pulled over, and I know it didn't turn off the lights. For the life of me, I couldn't find that state trooper. I can't stop thinking about it. So any thoughts are appreciated. So this happened to me about an hour ago. It's so silly yet at the same time terrifyingly weird. So I was making some tater tots in the air fryer. Yes, they are fantastic in there. So I like to dip them in mustard. And as they're cooking, I grab a plate and the mustard from the fridge. The only mustard we have and have had for a while. Once the tater tots are super crisp, I plate them and go to squirt out some mustard onto the plate. Yes, the same mustard I used last time. Like maybe five days ago, I squeeze the bottle and nothing comes out. I keep squeezing, audibly asking myself, what the hell is going on? So I take off the lid to the bottle and it's still sealed. What? I just used this mustard about five days ago. I even checked to see if it was the same brand. I know it was because it was some off-brand mustard. I know I didn't finish it last time and we never get that brand. I think it came from my mom or something when she was trying to get rid of some stuff. So that kind of stuck in my head and made me sure it was the same mustard. A pretty trivial glitch, but it kind of has my heart pumping.
So today I went with my friend to the store to get two things. A bag of Turbos Flamas and a bag of Takis. I remember telling him on the walk to my car that I've been craving Takis for so long and that's the main thing I wanted from the store. Even on the way into the store, I still remember telling him that I've been craving Takis for so long and that's the first thing I'm getting when I get in the store. So I walk in the store and I go straight to the chips and pick up two things. A bag of Turbos Flamas and a bag of Takis. My friend got a bag of some kind of Tapatio Doritos and I went and got a tea to drink. When I drop him off home, he takes his chips out of the bag and leaves my things in it. I don't look in the bag at all since it was in the back seat. When I get home, I lay it on my table and open the bag of Turbos Flamas and leave the Takis next to it. I ate a few chips and went upstairs to drop off my stuff, and when I returned I noticed something odd. Both my chips were missing. At first I asked my mom if she put them anywhere, and she said my brother took the Turbos Flamas and that she put the Takis in the pantry. I go to check the pantry and I can't find the Takis. I ask my mom if she's seen them, and she shows me the bag that she put away that was right next to the Turbos Flamas. However, this bag is a Doritos Flamas bag. She told me she never saw any Takis. I even called my friend to make sure he didn't have my chips by accident, and he told me he only had his. How is it possible that my chips changed from one brand to another that quickly without me noticing? brother called and said he was in an accident a week after his real accident. It wasn't him. Coincidence? Prank? Echo from the past? On the night of December 21st, I was in the basement watching a movie when my dad's phone started blowing up with calls. He was asleep, so I went up to see what was going on. It was my brother, and he had called multiple times. He also called me multiple times, but my phone was on silent because of the movie, and because my fantasy hockey team's chat was super active and getting annoying. I called him back, and he said that he had been in an accident, and that he thought he was going to get a DUI. He was coming home from out of state, and I'm still not sure of the details. I guess he had pulled off into the truck stop, and police saw him not go through the way station, so they stopped him and at some point he accidentally backed into a big rig. Nothing happened with actually backing up into the truck, just minor damage on his end. He refused the field test and opted for a blood test, which he got, and he also got to spend the night and a half a day in jail. That is all really irrelevant and personal, so I'll spare the details. Anyway, a week later, my dad gets a call from a random number. The person on the other end says, Dad, I was in an accident. He said it sounded just like him. After some frantic calling, which he never picked up, we finally got a hold of his friend, who knew where he would be working construction that day. My dad and my other brother decided to drive out there to see if they can find any sign of him in his truck. Remember, his previous accident is still fresh in everyone's heads, so everyone is in a state of panic. They finally get to the job site and see him there. He has no idea what they're talking about, when they tell him they got a call from him saying that he was in an accident. He had not been in an accident, and had just been working all that morning. We were all baffled by what happened. Who called my dad's phone? The number just disconnects when called, but it's associated with a local mortgage company. Was someone playing a prank? Was someone else actually in an accident and dialed the wrong number? Why did it sound like my brother, and why a week after all of that happened? We all find this extremely disturbing with the timing, so that's my glitch. I'm not sure what to make of it, but I find myself entertaining the idea that it was a call from a different timeline or something. Also, I wasn't sure about adding this, but maybe I will add to the strangeness. Seven years ago to the week, I saw a major car accident from a police chase, and then two years after that, which would be the same December week, I got in an accident with someone that that same brother knew. That ended amicably. But the girl I hit said, these things always seem to happen during the holidays. 
because she had also been in an accident around that exact same time a year or so prior. Maybe this is all just a bunch of coincidences, but I feel like that's just a few too many. About 10 years ago, one evening, I was having a sleepover with a good friend of mine. We were all having fun drinking energy drinks, watching horror movies, and eating chips. We were for sure going to pull an all-nighter, as 15-year-old boys do during sleepovers. It was getting pretty late and was around 3 a.m. when we started talking about the witching hour. I think we had heard in a couple of different movies that the time was 3.15 a.m., and it was a spooky paranormal time. So as the time was quickly approaching, we were getting a bit creeped out, but all in good fun. We started watching the time change from one minute to the next on my MacBook, hyping ourselves up. 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, preparing ourselves for the witching hour. 3.13, 3.14, almost there. And then all of a sudden, boom, 3.16. The time literally jumped over 3.15. My friend and I both freaked out laughing and confused. To this day, we're not sure what happened. Any explanations? This happened to me on Monday evening. I have a mirror at the end of my hallway, and in the reflection you can see both the living room door and my kitchen door at the other end of the hallway. In the evening, I was looking at myself in the mirror and in the reflection saw my boyfriend walking from the living room to the kitchen. Crossing the hallway is maybe two seconds, and I saw him clearly. It wasn't just a glimpse. I looked and smiled. I decided to go into the kitchen and tell him something maybe two seconds after he entered it. As I walk in, the room is empty. Now this is weird because there is no way that I would have missed him coming out of the kitchen. But still, I go into the living room and there he is on the couch. So I ask him if he's been in the kitchen, and he answers that he hasn't moved at all. I freaked out. He freaked out. Even more crazy is that he was actually considering going to the kitchen to eat some cake, but decided against it. I'm a bit worried that I have a brain problem. I've never had hallucinations. Either that, or in some reality, he did go and eat the cake. It started last week on Thursday. Every day before high school, I take the same route. I'm going to the pastry to get my breakfast. Then I have to cross the road in order to get to the entrance of my high school. I've been doing this for a year, if not more, so it's not a sudden change. Thursday and Friday of last week, 19th and 20th of January, I've seen the same man on the crossroad with me. Same circumstances on both days. It's always us alone on the crossroad, we're always going opposite directions. He's always the first one that steps on the crossroad, and then followed by me. And despite all the coincidences, I brushed it off thinking it's just in my head. Only I find it weird. But today I saw him again. But I didn't even have to cross the street. I was dropped off exactly at the entrance of the school. Yet I still saw him crossing the street as always and getting into his car. I am telling you that these were all different times I've saw him in. 7.47, 7.52, and 7.55 are about the times. But the point is, what are the possibilities of me always seeing him when I'm in that zone at different times, when I don't even cross the street anymore? In that matter of seconds where I'm in that exact place, he has to be there as well. How does this happen, and what does it mean?
Last night, I was driving from one small town in Texas to another that was about 40 miles away. It was an extremely foggy night, and I was definitely driving slower than normal. It was a route that I had driven hundreds of times. Only this time, I lost slash gained 20 minutes slash miles. Let me explain. Vision that night was extremely poor. Maybe 20 feet in front of me. I was traveling about 40 miles per hour when the speed limit is 50. Anyway, I left the small town heading for the next one. I knew that it would take me a good 40 to 45 minutes based on my speed and familiarity of the route. It didn't. I arrived in the next town in 20 minutes. Absolutely impossible. Yet there I was. I pulled over and just stood on the side of the road. It was after midnight, so very little traffic. I'm still trying to figure out what happened. Friday at midnight exactly, I decided to make some chili nachos. I know it was midnight because I looked at my phone to see what time it was to decide if I wanted to go to drive to get something to eat or not. The phone showed 12 o'clock exactly. So I decided to just reheat up the chili I made the night before on the stove and make nachos. I made the nachos and ate the nachos. I went to use the bathroom, then started messing with my Sony MP3 player. I looked at my phone and it was 12.03. I went in the front room and checked my clock. It was 12.03. The TV news said 12.03, but I had just spent at least 25 to 30 minutes cooking, eating, using the bathroom and messing around. I have had time disappear before by an hour two times and like two hours once, but I have never had time slow slash stop. I do not use any drugs. I drink occasionally, but was not drinking that day or night. I do not have any medical issues or take any medication. I'm a nighttime person, so I stay up pretty late without getting tired. I stop trying to figure out how these weird time things happen, and I just kind of roll with it. It was December 9th, 2018, when my father died and after his death, my brother and mother talked about strange smells and sounds of unusual knocking in the house, but I rationally tried to approach it and didn't believe in anything paranormal at the time. I didn't hear anything weird, didn't smell anything, and told my family in order to believe in anything supernatural, I'd need a solid proof. A few weeks later, when I finished work, I went to the locker room to change so I opened my cupboard. In the middle of it, there, lies a beautiful violet stone. I was stunned, but I photographed it, and when I got home, I posted the photos on a forum about minerals and gems to find out what kind of stone it was. I found out later that it was an amethyst. We didn't have spare keys at work, and if someone lost theirs, you had to break into these solid lockers, so there's no way someone could open mine and drop off the stone, because the locker was normally locked with no signs of a break-in. It was really weird. It was like stepping out of the matrix for a moment. I took the amethyst home and it lied there for a long time until 2020 when I was pissed off that I had something unexplained on the shelf. I always considered myself a scientifically oriented person. So I threw this stone in the garbage out of frustration. That same day I went out to the pub. It was after the breakup with my ex-girlfriend. I wanted to let off some steam. And while I went out to smoke, I started talking to this one chick. We got along well, so after a while, we went inside and she bought me a drink. Then darkness. I woke up lying on the market square at 9 a.m. with a complete lack of memory of what happened. I put myself together, got home and realized I was poisoned because I completely blacked out after one drink. It's never happened to me before. I went to the police to do blood test which confirmed I got GHB in my system. I checked all of my bank accounts. Four years of savings were gone. Maybe $50 were left out of the big sum. I was devastated for several months. 
In 2022, during the training at my new job, I talked to one trainer whose wife was interested in gems and minerals. I told him this story and sent him a photo of this gem, and his wife confirmed it was indeed an amethyst. What's more, she said that in ancient times they made goblets studded with amethyst to keep people sober, and they were supposed to prevent you from getting drunk. It blew me away, because the day I threw that stone out, I was poisoned. And to this day, I don't know what to think, because it sounds like a story straight out of a cheap book. In addition, I always had the keys to the locker with me. I thought maybe someone had played a prank on me, but I know these people well, and I looked around like crazy after seeing the stone, looking for smiles, tells, anything. But everyone had a poker face, and no one knew what was going on. Plus, it would be a weird prank if someone broke into a colleague's locker to leave an amethyst there. Plus, it doesn't sound like a joke. The fact that I had the keys with me all the time bugs me to this day, and I don't see any rational explanation for this amethyst appearing out of thin air. Also, the locks to these cabinets are really strong. I remember when someone lost a key, it took about 20 to 30 minutes to break it, and then the lock needed to be replaced. There were no traces of a break-in in my case. This story does have an interesting twist, because last year I went to Dresden, Germany on my own, and on the last day of my trip, for the first time in my life, I couldn't choose a restaurant, and in the middle of the day, a lot of the best spots were closed. Usually, I choose a restaurant in a minute. This time I stood there, undecided, in the center for 30 minutes, and I couldn't choose a place to eat. Then I heard a beautiful melody played on the violin. I turned around and walked towards the music, and in one of the squares, a duo was playing classical music, which I love. I'm standing there, and out of the corner of my eye, I see that I'm standing next to the gift stand. I turn around, because I just want to buy a small souvenir. And on this stand, apart from magnets and postcards, there were amethysts. I felt like I was in a movie. I bought one and still have it to this day. And even now, it hangs around my neck. Thank you so much for listening to the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the rain at the end of this video. I have been Innerscare. You can follow me on Twitter at InnerscareSleep. I hope you have an excellent rest of your night. Good night, everybody.